and unhide, you will see it. Oh. Unhide all, you can, always you can. Now, guys, in fact, I have, I hide so many things that you don't need to see. So I, I didn't tell you that, but it's very easy. I had, um, I hide also the uh, geography key, everything key, I hide it, everything key, you see here, channel key, geography key, product key, all these are hidden. So I hide all of these for you because you don't need the keys. It is there to link tables, but you don't need them. Now, the other thing is for the total sales, where is the total sales? Here's the total sales. I need to format it correctly. As you can see here, my total sales are in billions, millions, whatever. What do I, why do I need these decimal points? I don't need them. And also I need to show the dollar sign maybe or whatever, whatever currency it is. So I will go to the uh, uh, general here and I will select currency. And I will go to the decimals here and I click zero. So I will not see any decimals. Here it is. Now, again, I will put beside that one the order count. Where is that order count? We have just created this one. Huh? Order count. I'll drag it and drop it. It is order count. Now look at the order count. Order count is okay, it's numbers, but I need comma separator. So I click on the measure itself. I'm on the measure, okay? And I will click the comma separator. So it will be easily uh, read, okay? Now, now we need the average order amount. How can I get that team? Average order amount, how can I do that? Team? Average order amount. What? Team? With the formula. Which is what? You divide what? Total sales by order count. I will have the average order amount. Uh, is it okay? Team? Yes. Yes. Yes? So let's do that. Yes. Right click on the sales table and click a new measure. New measure. So what's this? We will call it average order amount. So average order amount. Uh -oh. Average order amount equal what? Now I can write here total sales slash order count. I can do that, but I will not do it. Why? Because what if for some reason the order count is zero? So I will get error. That's why in, in DAX, the language we are using now, which is similar to Excel, there is a function called divide, divide. Now the divide function is very powerful because what? It can handle the division by zero. So if I say divide, divide what? Total sales. So total sales, comma, by what? By order count, order count. Now, guys, it's worth men mentioning something here. Look at that. Look, I can hear if you want. This is another advantage. This is another advantage of having uh, measures. Let's say, guys, I will go with you and I will not create measure like the one we did here, total sales. Let's say I don't have total sales. I don't have total sales. I did not create it. I still have the sales amount. Now, if I want to divide, what, what do I need to do now? I have to say some, I have to say some sales amount, some sales amount, where is it, the sales amount? Sales amount, ah, here it is, okay. By, by what? Some order quantity, some distinct order, so always, I mean, Guys, I cannot use the sales amount because as I told you, I have millions of sales. I will always use some of those, some of those. That's why instead of doing so, uh, I created that measure. Uh, this is another reason why we don't need uh, to use, we cannot use those because every time we will use them, we have to use some because we don't have them as some, we have them individuals. So it's total sales again by comma, so comma, 
comma, order count. Here we have order count. Now, the beauty of this function is if, if order count is zero, you will get nothing empty uh, cell. Nothing, you will get nothing. This is the divide. Click enter. Now, here we have average order amount. Now, what I want to do is drag it and drop it here. Here it is. Again, I can say this one is uh, currency and it has uh, zero. Here, done. Now, team, are you there? Is it OK? Tim, are you okay? Are you yes, following? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Very good. Now, now look at that. There is a trick I want to show you here. It's very useful to use when you build your dashboard. Which is what? This one. Look at that. I have. This is a measure. This is another measure. This is a third measure. Now the thing is. Uh, they are scattered. Maybe I will have, I will add other measures here. Maybe I will add. So it will be very difficult to search where are my measures. Is there a way to put them in one place? Yes, there is. And here it is. Now we will put all these in exactly one place. So how we will do that? I will group all my calculations, let me say, in one place. How I will do that? I will go to the home tab. Okay. You don't need to do that. It's not mandatory, but it's best practice again. So the first best practice is we have to, we have to go and add measure for this. So here's what I, I have to do. I have to right click sales, new measure. I will call it return amount. What is this? It is the sum of return amount. We will try some of these. So, but first we will create a location to add all our measures there. Let's do that. So I click enter data. Enter data here. Now it says create a table. I will call it DAX measures. DAX measures. Click load. Now what you already did is you created a new table. New table. Now where is this table? Just a minute. Loading to the data model. OK, so where's the table? Here, you see DAX measure, this one, DAX measure. Now, what I want to do is I will move all these calculations. You see there is a calculator beside it here and there. I need to move those three to this DAX. But the thing is you cannot drag and drop. You cannot do that. What you can do is you go to the measure itself, click on it, and when you click on it, it will show you here that the home table for that measure is sales. Do you want that? No, I want to move it to the DAX measures. Click it. Now it will disappear from here and it will be there. OK, what about the older count? Again, I will do the same. I'm there. Uh, the home table is sales. No, I don't like that. I need it in the DAX measure. Let's go. Now, what about the last one, the profit? Uh, what is this profit? Ah, no, I don't need this profit. I don't need it. No, no, I don't need it. I will, I will I'll delete it. I don't need it. Delete. Right, because, because this is not uh, yet done. OK, so what do we have? We have one more. Ah, total sales. Total sales, yes. This one, total sales. Go to DAX majors. So look at that here. What do I have now? Now I have all my um, uh, my measures here. Now, do I need this column one? No, I don't. So now, because I have added those, I can now delete it. Because when it was alone, I cannot delete it. Now, as I have some of these, I can right click and delete. Delete this column, I don't need it. Now, what do I have in my DAX measure? My DAX measure? I have only the calculations. And here is the good thing. And now they are all grouped here, but let me show you a kind of magic. If you click this to uh, collapse the field, look at that. And one, two, three, expand it again, 
now you have DAX majors at the top, and it has it has this icon that shows calculations. Can you see that? Now all your calculations are there. Are we okay, team? Yes. Okay, that's it. Now, what we will do is we need to know our uh, net profit. So what is the net profit? It is the net profit. Total sales minus expenses. So what are the expenses? What are these expenses? Let's go. Expenses are discount amount and uh, return amount and total cost. You see, discount amount uh, and return amount and total cost. The problem is I don't have measures for those. Those are fields in tables. I have to create measures for those. So let's create measures. How I will do that? I will do that by I go now to the DAX measure because I want to create them here. No need to click on the on the sales. I will right click here and new measure. So what's the measure? Let's say discount amount. I will call it exactly discount amount equal what? Uh oh, I didn't write anything. So discount amount amount equal what? Equal some somewhat some discount amount. Discount. Amount. Remember the discount amount here here is a field in a table. This one is a field in the table. Discount amount here is a measure. It's not in any table. You cannot see it in the table. It's just a measure, a, a variable. That's it. Enter. And what else do we need? We need also the uh, return amount. So again, I will right click on the measure, new measure, and I will write here return amount. Again, here, return return amount equals sum somewhat return amount but with which return amount return amount which is a field in the table now everything is fine now i can calculate total expenses so what are the total expenses total expenses is the discount amount plus the return amount plus total cost let's do that right click new major okay new major we will call it total expenses here we go total total expenses equal what now i have measures for everything so if i write now discount discount here it is discount amount it's it's a variable i can use it plus plus what plus plus uh, return amount, return amount. Here it is, plus what? Plus total cost, total cost, total, total cost. What is total cost? Oh, I did not create total cost. Guys, we did not create total cost. We did not. That's why I cannot see it. Okay, I click enter. I click enter. I don't have total cost here. Where is it? That's why I didn't see it. You see, when you miss a measure, so total cost, where is total cost? There is no total cost. So I have to create a measure. Click enter and right click the DAX, new measure, and I will call it what? Total cost. So what is total cost? Total cost equal sum. Sum total cost sum total now i can see it you see because i'm using the sum it, it when you use sum you are referencing a column not a field particular field you are referencing a column now power bi or dax can see the column but it cannot see individual cell forget that that's in excel it cannot see individual cell at all it only sees columns that's why i'm using total cost here uh the major now we are done. Now I will go to the total expenses, which I already uh, calculated here, and I want to add to that plus total cost. So it's available as you can see.
es total cost. ¿Ok? ¿Sí? Tim, ¿algo o qué? Ya, ok. Now we can, because we have the total, expen the total expenses, and now we can have the net profit. So what is the net profit, Tim? Net profit is what? Basically, total sales minus uh, total expenses. Exactly, net profit equal uh, total sales, which minus is this, minus total expenses, uh, total, total, total sales minus total expenses, right? Total expenses, where's total expenses? Total sales, total cost. Total? Net profit equal, I have total expenses, right? Yes, it's right here, but uh, you need to create another. I think you no. deleted it. Just a minute, I created that, right? Here, here it is. Total yes. expenses, total yes. expenses, here. I think you, you need to ah. do the measure for it. Yes, exactly. Ah, I, guys, just a minute. You know what I did? What is the mistake? I did not click enter, so it disappeared. Look at that, where is it? It disappeared. I created that, but I did not click enter. I, I start right away to write the other one. Pay attention to that. So, you see, I don't have it. I will write it again. So, quickly, total expenses. You have it, right? So it's okay. So it is uh, discount amount, discount amount, uh, plus, uh, plus what? Uh, return amount, return amount, plus, plus what? Total cost. Uh, total, total cost. Total, total cost. You're currently editing the total cost measure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not was a new measure. Say that. Oh, oh, guys. Uh, so the, just a minute. Just a minute. So total cost is there, right? Let me check. It is correct. Total cost. The delay is the problem. Total cost is there, right? Now um, I can no, click I can here and new measure. New measure. Okay. The delay. Ah, so control V. Here it is. Total cost. Here it is. And we are done. Now, net profit. Now, here's the thing. I have to create, I, I forget to create new major. That's the, that's the mistake. New major, net profit. Now, it's available to write. So, net profit equal what? Equal, as we said. Uh, you already sales. have a measure called net profit. It's not going to like it. No, no, I deleted. I deleted that. No, it's there. No. Ah. Uh, it shows right there. Uh, just a minute. I created that why why I'm explaining. Let me see what is this. Just a minute. Let's see. What is this? Net profit. Ah, no. Uh, forget it. Yes, I can continue. That's why because I started writing. So it's total sales minus minus what? Total expenses. Uh, yes. Total expenses. Done. That's it. Now. I can drag these total expenses. Where is it? Total expenses. Here it is. Total expenses. Drag it and drop it. Maybe after, maybe after total sales. Here it is. So total sales minus total expenses. Okay. Now, as you can see, total expenses is not properly formatted. So I go to the currency and I will also say it's zero zero decimals can i ask and you please please yes, so it's related to the formatting right uh, well can we see the numbers like for example we can just uh, uh, put in the heading that the numbers are in dollar m which is dollar millions and then just show the numbers in thousands like divided by thousands these numbers what, what do you mean you you mean you, you want to change the titles here so, for example, yes, I want to change the title. I want to change. Okay, okay, yeah. uh, okay. You can. So let's say for the uh, total expenses, right? Where's the total expenses? This is the total expenses. So I need the total expenses and dollar in, sign here. In dollar million. Dollar M. Dollar M. 
Okay, dollar M, you can, you can. It's a title, you can do whatever you like. Dollar M, this one, like this. Yeah, but I want to change the values as well. You know, yes, yes, absolutely you can. Absolutely you can, you can. So you need to change the formatting of this one to be That's in millions, true. right? That's exactly, true. guys, here. Uh, exactly like you do in uh, in Excel. So what do you do uh, for this kind of thing in Excel? What do you do? Well, of course, we have to divide it by thousands, isn't it? You want to divide it by thousand? Yeah, well, we, for example, the value coming here is 479. So that's basically, for example, if I if I take the example of this, right? So that's mm. 479, uh, 4.79 million, right? So I want to show it as 479. You, you yeah. can divide it. Yes, you can. If you want, you can do this, do this. And you want to divide, right? That's right. So I will write divide by, so I can use divide. Oh, let me try the slash now. Slash, what, 1,000? Yes. Let's say. Or use divide if 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 you want, you can. Here it is. Yeah, that's that's what you want. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, and you can right click here and say zero. So now it's done. You can do that, exactly. And you can add comma separator if you want. Whatever, you know, you know how to play with it. Okay, are we okay, team? Now yes. we need the net profit. We need also the net profit. So I will drag the net profit and drop it after total expenses here. So this is it. By the way, guys, this is in million. This is in million. So we are dividing this by that. It's in million. Uh, net profit, total sales. Guys, something strange here, right? Ah. Total expenses, um, uh, I need to divide this also, right? Guys, I have to divide this one now because I divided, uh, let me check here, I this, I, I'm checking the values, guys. Uh, look with me if you please. If I drag the net profit after the sales and this. Now, what, what's, what's going on here, why? Because I'm subtracting what? Guys, why, why I have these numbers? Is it correct? No. Why? Yeah, because you are you are subtracting ten million from four hundred seventy nine thousand. So you need to uh, convert the total sales as well into yes. Million. In this case, I need so I will uh, I, because yes, I need also to convert this. I will get the right result. So that's why I will not. But you get the idea, right? Are we okay? So I remove it to check the values. Just to check the values. So here we go. You see, it's correct just because we divided this and we did not consider the sales and the other one. Are we okay, team? Are we okay? Yes. Cool. Okay, now, now, very important concept. Guys, here I'm focusing more on concepts rather than on, on uh, the, the doing that because building that visual is very, very easy. You know, I can now click this one and I will have a chart of those. I click this, it will change. It's very easy to do that, but I'm now focusing in the concept. So the other very important concept when you want, and in fact, you cannot without it, it's what? This concept now. Let's say I want now a chart that shows my uh, net profit now and my net profit previous year. You get what I want? I need my net profit. I need a chart that shows my net profit, let's say January this year, and compare it to January last year. How can I do that? So what I will do is I need, I need what we call a calendar. Now, or let's say I want a running average of my net profit, a running average of my net profit. So I need a calendar. I don't have a calendar right now. Look at that. The tables I have, here are the tables I have. Here are they. These are. I don't have a calendar. You can say why you don't have. You have. Because here in the sales, let me go to the data here, you see, and I am on the sales, um, I am on the sales, and you see here, I have dates, but look at those dates. April 1st, April 1st, April 1st, April 2nd, 2nd, 3rd, 3rd, 3rd. So, because this, these are daily transactions, I have so many repetition for dates and uh, even gaps. Sometimes I don't have anything. I, I don't have work. I'm, I'm off. So, there are gaps. If you want to use the power functions of DAX language, 
which is we call them time intelligent functions if you want to use that power like what like if you have the sales now and you have let's say six years okay i want to compare this year with five years ago sales oh how can you do that that scan but to do that you need a calendar you need i mean a table with day to day all the days between the first day you started work here the first day what is the first day so let's say i started in january 1st 2007 okay january 2007 down to whatever down to 2020 now i need a table that contains all the days day by days without repetition you see here january 1st how many times i have it so many times all the transaction in january 1st then it will come maybe january 2nd january 3rd. Let, let, let me go quickly guys here look at that october october how many times so how do we do that to do that we will create a new table so it's about creating a new table that table the table we will create is a calendar table so here it is we'll go to new table guys we are on a, an, any table of this new table so pay attention to that we have we have enter data and we have a new table so they are similar don't be confused this is the one we use to create a table and we use it to create the measures now this one is to create a real table now let me tell you what if i go to the model here is the dax measures the one we created it's it's a table but it has nothing inside it by the way it's empty it's only variables no data inside it here these are the one we created and if we go to the data in fact and i click on the dax measure this table here i have nothing there is i even deleted column one that i cre uh, that was created i don't have anything it's only a folder for my measures now what i will do is i will create a real table so new table here it is new table okay we will call it calendar Okay, now the function to create a calendar is calendar itself. Calendar. Here it is. Okay, now you want to create, look at that. It returns a table with one column of all dates between start and end. Okay, what is the start? The start, I don't know. The start is the minimum, the minimum date in the sales. The first day we started selling the first product, what was that? That's my start date. So I will write minimum, minimum what? Minimum uh, from the sales, I need that date. Here it is, date, close parenthesis, comma. What is the end date of that calendar? Again, I don't know. It's whatever is the last day, maybe today, maybe today if someone is uh, sending new data every week as we said now the calendar is dynamic whatever is there in the folder 2007 8 9 20 whatever in the folder the last date in this calendar is dynamic it will get the maximum maximum what maximum date uh, maximum uh, date yes from the sales but where is the sales uh, let me write sales it's easier to pick it sales date there it is close done guys you get what we did here uh, team what i did is i told power bi power bi go to my sales table whatever data there see which one was the first date and which one is the last date and now i need you to create a table with no repetition with no gaps for all the dates from the minute I started up to date, click enter. Here it is, look at that. January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, day by day, no repetition, no gaps, all the days. Maybe on you have holidays, maybe you work on holidays, maybe you don't, all the days, all the days. Now, by the way, guys, uh, you can change the formatting, it's very easy, go to format, 
and tell Excel, um, not Excel, Power BI, I, I need, I don't need time. It doesn't matter if you keep the time. Even if you don't, it is there. It is there if you even if you, but I don't want to see it as, as date and time. So here it is, day by day. Is it okay, team? Are we okay? Any question? You get the idea why do we need this one first, team? To show team, the you... part of the show the visuals in uh, date, of, um, I mean month-wise or quarter-wise. If we want to see now, yes, the advantage of creating that if I want to see the date quarter-wise, month-wise, if I want to see my sales. Uh, uh, two years behind, four years ahead, whatever. I can now play because I have a calendar, a continuous, uh, a continuous uh, dates for all my data. Are you okay? That's a tool, guys. If you will use Power BI, create always this calendar. Always create it. You will need it. I will show you now. Let's create a chart now that will create will calculate. Uh, any question, team? Question. Team? No question, sorry. Okay. Now, look at that. What we have is we have our DAX major. In our DAX major, we have our net profit. So, how can I calculate the net profit for the previous year? Because what I want is I want, uh, I want a chart that shows two bars for every month. This year, previous year, this year, January, previous year, January, this year, April, previous year, April. That's what I want. I want to compare what I'm doing now with what I did previously. So here's what I will do. I will, I will, I need to create a major. So new major, new major. Now, what do you call this major? I will call it, I will call it previous year net profit. Previous year net profit. Okay, previous year net profit. Now, how I will calculate that? Here's the power of uh, the time intelligence functions. Okay, it equal what? I need you to calculate. Now, it's it's the most important function in Excel. Calcul and uh, Power BI guys, I keep saying this. Uh, calculate. So, okay, I need you to calculate. The net profit, the net profit, net profit, okay, but not for this year, for the previous year. So how I will tell that, how I will tell DAX the previous year. Here it is. I will say date add. There is a function called date add. Now, although it is called date add, it can add and subtract. It can go, I mean, uh, forward and backward. So date add. I will go to my calendar, uh -huh, the one I created now. I need the date from the calendar, the date from the calendar, and I want you to go back minus one or two or five comma years, maybe quarters, maybe months, maybe years, so years. Year. Close. Enter. Done. I have that. I have my net profit for the previous year. By the way, uh, guys, it's it's logic. Look at that. Calculate the net profit itself. We have the net profit, but I want you to go back one year. Now let's draw a chart. Let's see that on a bar chart. What what are we going to get? So maybe this is something I need to see later, I, 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 or I will, I, I will use it. So I put it here. But now I need a chart. In that chart, I need the uh, net profit. Where's the net profit? Here's the net profit. Okay. And look at that. Now this is the net profit, right? This is the net profit. Now because I have added the calendar, look at that. Because I have the, the calendar, I can now, and this is now the power of uh, the visuals in Power BI Desktop. If I click on the date or I drag and drop the date here, uh, either way, 
So because it is selected. Now look at that. It is sliced by years. Look at that, 2007, eight and nine. I have all of them. Now, okay, this is only the net profit, guys. It's only the net profit. You know what? Let me also make it smaller. Four for the time only. Here, okay, now we can, you see here we have arrows. What are those arrows? If we want to drill down, so I want to drill down. I don't want to see by years, but by quarters. So here it is, quarters. I want to go down by month. Here it is. I want to go down by days. Here it is, by days. Now the thing is, look at that, it's by years. But when I go down, yes, it shows quarters, but which quarter, which year is this? Now that's why you have the other one. It will show you, it will expand and drill down, but it will keep the previous, the previous level. So if you click it, you will see this quarter one, 2007, quarter two, quarter three, quarter da, 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 so on so. If you go further down, you will see that by month also, or oh, try that guys. So if I get down, it will go also by month names, month names now. I can go up and go down. Down. Okay. Guys, there's something something strange. Can you tell me what's the reason? Look at that. 2007 net profit is exactly like eight, is exactly like, uh, like uh, nine. What does it mean? What's the problem here, team? Relation have been not happening. Yes. There is a problem in the relation. Very good. What is the problem exactly? We created a table, which is the date, but we did not link it. Let's go. You see, we created the calendar, this one. We know this has nothing but our variables, but this calendar, it's doing nothing. So we need to link it to our sales. So I will grab the date and drag it on the date here. Now, if you say 2007, it will filter those for 2007. Now, as you can see the effect of that. Team, are we okay? Is it done? Now, if I go down again, you see, I can see them like this, or if I, I go, I see them by quarters. Now I can see that, yes, there is a difference between those. Okay, now what about, what about the previous year? The one we created, great, let's go. So this is our net profit. Net profit in this time, net profit on that quarter, that quarter, that quarter. Okay, very good. Now, what if I want to add the uh, previous year? Let's do that. Previous year, okay, I'll drag it, either drop it on the chart here or drop it in the values, but I'll drop it here. Uh -huh. Look at that now. What is this? It says here that for quarter nine, quarter nine, uh, sorry, quarter three of 2009, your current says net profit here. This is the net profit, the green one. The black is the previous year. So in 2009, quarter three, the net profit is 132, as you can see. But the previous year net profit is 156. So look at that. 2008, quarter three. I am in quarter three, 2009. Quarter three, 2009. What is the previous year? The previous year is quarter three, 2008. Is it 156? Let's go. Uh, quarter three, here it is. Look at that, 156. It is correct. You see this value. It is the net profit now, but it is the previous year net profit here. Team, are we okay? You get the idea? Guys, what? Where is your voice? I cannot hear you. Yes, Are you there? 
Yeah, we've got the idea of You get the idea. So what I am doing is I, I see now that in any quarter, let's say here, uh, let's say uh, quarter, quarter, uh, uh, quarter one, 2009. Quarter one, 2009 is 110. What is quarter one, 2008? It is here, the black. It is 117. Oh, let's go to quarter one here. Yes, it is 117. Net profit. Now, if you, by the way, go down, you will see that by month and the same applies. Now, why I don't have any black bars for this year? Why? Because you don't have 2006 data. So what can I do? I don't need these in this case because the whole thing is about comparing and there is no comparison here. I don't need them. What can I do, you think? I can filter them out. Okay, how I will do that? Whenever in, uh, in a when whenever you click on a visual, whenever you click on a visual, here you have a filter. You see, you have fields, visuals, and you have filter. If you click on the filter, here's the filter. Now all the fields used on that visual are there. So you have the day, the month, the quarter, the year, and you have net profit and previous year net profit. Okay, so the previous year, I don't have 2006. So it means I don't have previous year for, for those. So what I will do is I will go to the uh, net profit previous year, and I will say, I need to filter out what is not blank, is not blank. I need only show items when the value is not blank. So I need only uh, the one that has value. I will filter out the, 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 the values. So show only, not blank, this one. Okay, and I will click what? Apply filter. Here it is, done. Now I have only those with current and previous year. Now, guys, a little bit about the visualization as well. So what if I want to play with this one? What do I mean play? Let's say I want to add labels, I want to add colors, I want to do that. Oh, by, by the way, play with that, guys. It's very easy. When you click on it, as I told you, you have two things. Either the dates, uh, the fields, I say, the, the, the fields, uh, or the formatting. By the way, here we have everything. We can drill down to the year, day, month. But let's say I don't like these dates. No need. Even you don't need maybe the month, only years and quarters. Great. You cannot now go down further. Look at that. You cannot go further. Only you have two levels, years and quarters. So automatically, when you generate a calendar, you generate a hierarchy. And by default, it's there. The hierarchy is there. Now you can go up to see that by years. And you can go down, but to query. What if you change your mind? I need all the levels. Click here and show all levels. All levels are now you can go further down if you want. You can go down and down and down to any level you want. Are we okay? Guys, I'm asking you all the time because I cannot see you. I cannot know. I, I, I don't know the reaction. Are you following? Are you not? Is it okay? So excuse me for that. I'm always asking. Okay. No now, okay. now what we, I, we want to play a little bit with this one. So here, I go to the visualization, okay, visualization. And in fact, we can do visualization over this and that. I will show you on both these two visuals. What can we do here? Sometimes you need to search for the things. By the way, Microsoft always updating. They keep updating this stuff. So let's go. I start by, uh, by the table, let's say here, the table. So uh, the table, I will go to uh, formatting, and I have, let's say, the style. Uh, the general is about the position. It's only about where is it. Uh, I don't care. But style, style, this is the default style. So what do we have? What else do we have? We have flashy rows. We have uh, bold headers. We have uh, condensed. We have, you see, sometimes you need those. You have uh, whatever, bold header, flashy rows, whatever. You, you play with that, okay? You can always revert to default. Okay, this is the style. What else? Grid. So what do we have about the grid? As you can see here, my grid has no vertical 
vertical uh, grid lines so I can turn on the verticals. Maybe you cannot see them, but I can change their color and the thickness of those. So I can play with the thickness. Look at that. And even the color, maybe I need them red like this. Okay, let's go down. What about the horizontal ones? Horizontal ones are on, but they are gray. But the thickness is one. I, I'll increase that. I can maybe also I change that to, to uh, maybe blue like this. You can. Okay, Jean. So what about the, let's say, text size? Uh -huh. I can play with the text size. See, play with the text. So play with those. Just play with those. You you will figure it out yourself. It doesn't matter. It's not a very big deal. Now, there is something here I want to show you, which is I will revert to default. Here's the default. Always you have this option. Now, what we have, team, are you with me? Yes, you are, right? So here, yes. as you can see here, I have this table. Now, what if, what if, if I click this, I change it to a matrix? So what's the difference between a table and a matrix? If you click on the matrix, look at that. So what's the change? As a, a, a appearance wise, there is no big difference, but functionality wise, there is. The matrix is exactly like, like what? Pivot table in Excel. Guys, pivot table in Excel, if you, if you remember, if you go to pivot table, you have four squares. The rows, the, what goes in rows, what goes in columns, what goes into columns, and what are the values, and what is the filter, report filter. Exactly the same here. When you click on that, if you go to the fields, you have rows, columns, values, and the filter is here, the one I showed you earlier. So this is a matrix. Okay, so what if it is a matrix? In the matrix, if I drag, if I drag the dates, let's say instead of the category, or maybe I will drag what? I will drag the geography. Let's go to the geography. I have a hierarchy here. I will drag it. Here it is. Now, look at that. I have these are the, uh, the continents. If I go down, oh, now it is what? The region. If you go down, it is the uh, state. If you go down, it's now at the city level. And by the way, if you use, as we said earlier, if you click this, this means expand. Don't remove the original one. I mean the top level. Here it means only show me the next level. Here it, mean, it means show me both. Look at that. North America, that's what we have. Canada, United States. For Asia, I have all of those. For Europe, I have those. Now, what if I go further, drill down further, go. Now what? I have three levels. The continent, the uh, region, and the state, the cities, all of this. I go further down. Now I am at the city level. So I'm in Washington, and these are the cities of Washington. But if you go up, you are at the state. If you go up, you are in North America at the continent level. So now, as you can see here, you can go down and up. So one of the things that you don't see here, guys, in, in, in um, the table, we have usually a plus sign beside those. You click it. What if I want to expand only Asia, not all of them? In fact, this is a formatting thing. Let's go to the formatting. So I am on the matrix here. And I'm on the formatting. Let's try to guess where is this? Is it in the style? Is it here? Is it there? It's in the row headers because I need a header for the row, a plus sign. So go there, row header. Let's read font color, outline, then this, word wrap, family. And here it is, plus minus icons. Take that one. Now you have it. Now, if you click Asia, it will only uh, expand this one. If you want to India, let's say you click India, you expand only India. Again, West Bengal. Here we go. Now it is uh, the the cities inside there. Are we okay? Is it okay, team? So it's all about formatting. Now play with the formatting. It's very easy. Now what if let's say title? Let's say title. I'll go there. Let's play with this one. Okay. Now this one. You see, I have a title here. 
And in fact, if I go to the formatting, if I go to the formatting, uh, where is this title thing? General is about position. All the time it's about position. Guys, play with those because there are thousands of those. It depends what visual are you using. But in general, you can figure it out. So let's read you. Uh, data colors, data colors, good one. Maybe this is the green and uh, the black. Let's check if you want. Uh, data colors, yes, it is, as you can see. The green and uh, you can change that. Uh, very easy, not difficult. Okay, now what else do we have? Uh, data colors, I don't need this. Data labels, okay, what is this? Data labels on. Aha, uh -huh. this is it, the labels, you see? Now I have the numbers above the bars. So data labels is this one, look at that, it is this. But as you can see, beside the label, there's an arrow. If you click it, it means you can further customize it. It means there are extra customization for data labels. Let me click it. So what do I, what can I customize? The color, it's now black. Okay, I don't want to do anything, but there's something good. The unit, I need these unit to be in thousand, not in millions. Look at that. It's now in thousands, which is very good here. Look at that. Now, what else do you have? Uh, maybe I don't need decimal places. The orientation. Again, I needed vertical orientation. Here it is, vertical orientation. Still, we didn't see the title. Where's the title now? Uh, the size of the text of these, the, the font. The title uh, goes down. Here is the title. Ah, uh, here is the title. Okay. You know what? Let me let me do this. And here's the title. Uh, let's go to the title. Where's the title? Title, title. Here it is. Off. First of all, check, check that it is. Yes, it is. The title. Okay, this is it. But I can further customize it. How? Click. First of all, you can change it. F first of all. So maybe it's my, I don't know, yearly comparison, yearly something, yearly net profit, whatever you want to write. So here, yearly net, whatever. Whatever you want. Now, you can change the color of that. You can change, it is alignment, it's alignment. Here it is, the size of the text. Even the background, we did this, where is the background? Ah, yes, the background, here it is. So I need this background, I can do that. And the color maybe is white or whatever. Okay, here it is, you can. So play with it, or the, even the font. The background. Now, the background of the whole thing, let's try. What is this background? First of all, it's on. On, okay, then it is, let's say, let's see what's this. Yellow, oh, so the whole thing, you can change that. And guys, I, I didn't discuss, but also you can have conditional formatting for, you for this thing. This is the FX. It's conditional formatting for the colors. I will not discuss it. It's a long story by itself. Okay, guys. This is FX means condition, but it's very easy. You can you can figure it out. Now, uh, borders. If you want borders, if you want to, the, wah, wah, figure, you you can check this yourself. Okay. Now, I, I want to show you something else, which is what, which is also important, is the cards. The cards. Usually, if we want to build a dashboard. There are something, uh, some information that we want to grab the attention of our users. So it's very important, KPIs, something important. For those, we, we use KPIs, this one, cards. So what is the card? I click card here, and here's the card. Now it's very huge, but I can would make it small, and I can drag it and put it on the top so it will grab the attention of people. Okay, so what do you want to see in that i want here to see in that one here we go here it is selected i need here to see the net profit net profit this is the net profit done now but i want to play with that a little bit what net profit is here i need it as a title not below so what we will do is we'll go to that visualization guys can you do that yourself i need this net profit not here but on the top can you do that? Try. Uh, can I ask a question, please? Please. Uh, in geography table in the fields, how did you get the hierarchy? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> very good one. <laughs> okay, I will show you. Very good one. Guys, 
In fact, uh, guys, we have limited time. I cannot uh, discuss everything, but this is something really worth mentioning here. Very good one. Now, the calendar is something automatic, right? Now, what about geography, guys? You get the idea? Uh, so, Patalia is asking, right? Patalia, you asked me this question, right? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Now, she's asking, how come that here, look at that, how, how come you have the hierarchy? How? In fact, I created that myself. But I did it, I didn't tell you, I showed you that in, in the in this calendar, but I didn't show you. I will, I will remove it and I will show you how to create it. Good question. Uh, okay, very good one. So I deleted the hierarchy. I don't have anything. <coughs> now, you see, now it won't work. Because why? I don't have hierarchy. Even if I click anything, it's what? It's, it's uh, you cannot. So how do you create the hierarchy? In fact, I can here create two hierarchies, not one. I can create hierarchy for geography. And you know what? I can create hierarchy for my products because I have product name, product subcategory, and product category. So I created this also as well. If you want, I will delete it and create. By the way, it's very easy to create it. So I'll delete as well this one. Let's go and create the hierarchies for the product and for the uh, geography so you can drill through if needed. Here it is, very easy. So, continent is at the top level. Below it is the region. I will drag region and drop it on the continent. Now, when you do so, this is the hierarchy started. The continent below it, the region. Are you done? No, I'm not done. I still have the state. I drag the state and drop it on the hierarchy. Here it is. Now you have one, two, three continent. You see, they are indented a little bit. Now, are you done? No, I'm not done. I still have the city. I drag the city and drop it on the continent. Now I have a complete hierarchy. Now it's done. If I drag it and drop it, it now will show me all those. Patalia, thank you for your question. Okay, what about this uh, product thing? The product is uh, again the same. You know, guys, we have at the top, we have the category. Below it, the subcategory, and below it is the product. Let's do it. I'll grab, by the way, guys, if you made a mistake, you can always delete the hierarchy, delete the hierarchy, you can always delete and recreate it. It's very easy. Now, let's do that here. So I'll drag the subcategory, over the category, okay? And I will drag the product name. You see, in my hierarchy, I have two things indented, the category and the subcategory, they are indented. Now I need the product name as well to drag it and drop it here. Now my hierarchy is complete. I have all of those done. In fact, this name, I can change it. I will rename it. You can do that all the time, rename it too. Instead of that very big name, I will call it a very tall name. Here it is, product hierarchy. That's it, done, product hierarchy, enough. And even this one, I can call it, or what is it? I can call it uh, geography hierarchy, if you want, or con not continent, geography is better. Geography hierarchy, that's it. So you can do that. Are you okay, team? Yep, thanks. Welcome. Now, yeah. how, yes, uh, good. Now, guys, how can we play with that? Again, the same. I'll go to the formatting. And now, here. So, how can I remove this net profit and put it on the top? It's not that straightforward. It's not that, but it's not that difficult. You can figure it out. Can you guys try? I need net profit to be a title. First of all, look at this. If you check here, you see that title is off. Oh, it's off. So it means this is not a title. Absolutely not. So what if I make it on? So on, okay, what's that? Nothing here. Let me drag a little bit. No on, so let me check. Where's the title? Ah, there is no title. Okay, let me write here, net profit. Net profit. 
Uh, now I have net profit here, and let's say I want that to be uh, to be. No, I will not format it. I will not. Only I will uh, make it larger, the font size. Now, what's this in this case? In this case, this is something else. Let's check what is this. It's it's category label. Look at that category label. So let's turn it off. Uh huh. That's it. Category label. Now. What if I want the formatting of this visual to be exactly like this one? We have the, say, the tool we know. You click on this one and to go to the Format Painter. Here it is, Format Painter, copy it. So you copy this formatting and now take this one. I did not take it. Tick. Here it is, done, the same formatting. No need to do the whole story. Maybe you know what, for my, for my uh, KBIs, Maybe I need different colors. Maybe I need, I, you can do that. I need another KPI. I can control D, uh, control C, control V, copy and paste. Here it is, another one. And maybe another one here. So again, another one here. Now I will change the values and the title. In this, I need the order quantity. So I click on the folder, on the visual, and I will select from here. Uh, untick the net profit and the order count. Order count, this is the number of orders. Now I have to change the, the title of this one. I'll go to the title here in the formatting title, and instead of that, total orders. Total orders, orders, okay. What about this one? Now this one, let's say it is total expenses. Again, I'll go to my measures, Untick net profit and tick total expenses. Here it is, the no total expenses. Click. Why I cannot click it? No, oh, it is. This is the total expenses. But why it is not? Oh. Untick net profit, untick net profit, and tick total expenses. Here it is. Now it's okay. Okay, guys. Here. Look at, so I have again to change that title. Are we okay? Team, you see what are we doing? Is it okay? Team? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, now, it's okay. The, the last thing I will show you guys, the last thing is the filters, the slicers. It's important as well. By the way, you, as I told you guys, you can you can take in anyone and insert any chart, play with it. It's not that difficult. You just drag and drop things. Now we have all the data uh, shaped and formatted and built correctly. We can use them. Now, one thing I want to show you here is the slicer. This one, the slicer. The slicer is exactly filter in Excel, the filter itself. So you, if you click a slicer, you see what I did? You see what I did? So what I did is I, I selected this one. I selected this and I click this. It means what? Replace this one with this. I have to click on a white space. Guys, this is something that happened all the time. So click on white space and then click the filter. And the filter is here. As you can see, here it is. Okay. Let's say I want to slice my data by, by, by categories. So I will go to the field here, uh, here, okay, and I will go to the uh, product, and I will not select the hierarchy because I need only by category or subcategory, whatever I want. So I need only the category. Drag and drop the category. Here are they, the categories. Or maybe I need now. Look at that. Uh, by the way, but this is a list, but you can change it to a drop down list like this now it will not take too much space now you would click here and then you select whatever you want and that's the beauty of power bi when you select an item everything will reflect you see when you take this one that's something you don't have in excel here the interactive you see it's interactive whatever i take it will update on all in fact if i take on this column it will update the values. So these are computer sales. If I click here, if I click there, if I, so maybe I select, let me remove this one. So I take this, I take this, all. So I have so many products here. 
I'm, I'm selecting the values. If I select a specific product, now I am filtering only for cell phones. So these are my cell phones to these countries, to these uh, continent. These, it's, it's only cell phones, only cell phones. And that's the, the share of cell phones net profit. This year, previously, only cell phones. You get the idea. If you select something else, TVs, now everything will update. What if I want two things? Hold control, hold control, hold control, and select. Now it reflects on all the tables and the visuals. Multiple selection. Clear that. If I tick on India, let's say, I'll tick on India or Japan or whatever. So let's say India, tick. Now it reflects the values for India, all the values. What if North America? Here it is, North America, all the values. Are we okay, team? What if uh, I will add one more slicer, only one more slicer, so I will add another slicer, I'm here, and I will add slicer for, let's say, uh, for brands, maybe. So I put it here, here, okay, and I will make it smaller, and I will go to the uh, products, here are the products, and I have the brand, here it is the brand. Now again, I have them as list, uh, I need you to make it as a drop down list, now, again, if I want to see my sales, my net profit of that brand, guys, if I click this, let's say, I don't know, Contoso, Adventure Wars, now I will see my net profit of that brand. This year, last year, my sales to North America, everything for this kind of brand. It, you see, it, it, uh, it changed automatically. Guys, that's what I can deliver in these five hours. I hope that you enjoyed and it wasn't a headache for you. I know it's a lot of information, guys, in five hours. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you have a question, please feel free. And we are always reachable at Symphotex. You can send us emails, ask if you have anything to help with. We, uh, we can help with, please. It's, it's free. We can help you with your dashboard. Uh, please do ask. Uh, you are always welcome. So if you don't have any question, I'll go back to Kazi, guys. Are you, are, are, do you have any question? Yes, I do have a question. Yes, please, please, please. Okay, so, so my question is that, for example, if I, if I create, if I prepare this, uh, this dashboard or, uh, you know, this report. So for example, if I communicate it to some in the higher management, do they have to have Power BI installed on their machine? Now, you have here so many options. The first one is, yes, they need to have it there, but the data are on a server, this one option. If you don't want that, uh, you can publish it to the web, but in this case, you need an account. Uh, you need a Power BI account. In that case, no, they don't. You can publish it and they can use the browser to interact with the data. They don't need anything. Do you have to have Power BI Pro to do that? Yes, you need to have a Power BI Pro and uh, because this one is free. The, you know why, why Microsoft make this one free? It's for you to develop the, the uh, report. And then if you want the sharing capabilities, you need to go to the web. Yes, you need. If we have an account uh, on the web, then uh, whatever we have created here, we can um, share it there. Sorry? If, I, we, I, I, have an account, if we have an account on yes. the based and whatever we have created in this trial version, we can move yes. it there. Yes. Uh, in fact, guys, don't be so much disappointed. You can share this, but but you can share it differently. I mean, you can go there. And let's say you can publish, here is the publish. Here you publish it to Power BI on the web, here's the way. But you can also export that to a PDF, if you want. To PDF you can, but you know, PDF, it's not interactive. And you can also use it in PowerPoint, because when you when you export it to, uh, uh, to PDF, you can capture those and put them on your slides. You can do that, but if you publish it, People can interact with it exactly like this. You will see the same exact interface, but over the web. 
Uh, oh, so we cannot copy it directly from the same sheet into the what PowerPoint. Like I go into this uh, chart or diagram. And ah, now the yeah. thing is that you can, but I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, I don't know how you will take it there. It, let's try. I will copy it. Look, look, so I copy all of those, right? And right. I will go to PowerPoint. Here's my PowerPoint, by the way. And let's say I will Control M here. And here I will control V. Just a minute. Uh, not here. Control V. No, no. You see? Mm. There is no paste. But, but, uh, let me let me copy one of those. Let's say this one. It's not a photo here. It's not a photo yeah. here. It's a, an element. So that's why you need to you need to export it to PDF. Then you can, you know what? You can get it and put it in the Power BI, in the mm -hmm. PowerPoint. Cool. Guys, now here's uh, the good news. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I have one another question. Uh, you remember the when you do the field for the DAX measurements? Yes. If you can show me that again, please. You mean, uh, uh, you mean, what do you mean? Maybe you mean. Uh, go, uh, go, go to the fields. Ah, uh, fields, yes. Yeah. Uh, here you find the DAX measurement, uh, measures. Uh, How can it? Yeah, how can I add this one? Uh, okay, okay, good one. Here, you, we are on the home tab, as you can see. You right. enter data, enter okay. data, okay, mm -hmm. enter data. Now, it will say here, you want to create a table. I will say, yes, I will call it, let's say, uh, uh, I will call it, let's say, my, my measures, measures of DAX. Okay, I will call it this way. Okay. Here. Now, what you have is you have a new table. Look mm -hmm. at that. Just a minute. It will create that. <clears throat> and because you are creating a table, it, it, it does this. Because you are creating a table, it adds that to the. Here it is. You see? Yeah. My yeah. measures of that. Now, if you have measures, now let's say the measures are here now, right? I want right. to move them to this one. I go to this major and the home here. Look at the, I am on the major here. Okay. I need to change its home from DAX major to my measures of DAX. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Here it and, is. And for uh, the calendar part, you've done the same thing, right? No, that's it. It's similar, but not the same. I am on the home. Now, mm -hmm. you don't click enter data here. It's not enter data. It's what? Look at that. It's not here, we have inter data, right? But yeah, we need what? Uh, create table, who is this? Where is that? Create table. New table, guys. When am I? No, not insert. Mm -hmm. uh, what's this? No, transform, what is that? Not on the insert, just a minute. Let me go to one of these tables. So I am on the, uh, what is it? Uh, Table tools. Oh, here. Yeah, Table okay. tools, yes. Table tools, and here it is. You see? Okay. Uh, and that's it. New table. Now, this is creating a table using formulas. So I will write now the name of the table. What do you want to call it? Table. Right. I'll call it calendar. Okay. Equal okay. what? Calendar. calendar. And you continue calendar. And you continue minimum, max. Uh oh. Calendar, calendar, table calendar. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, uh, no, that, uh, the calendar function here, the calendar yeah. function, this one. Then we choose the minimum and Start maximum. And minimum. Yes, that's yes. it. Yes. Guys, any other question? I have a quick one regarding slices. Uh, do you know when you use a slicer, is it possible to, um, so obviously if you're using it for, filtering in the same variable, that's easy. But what if you want to use two different dependent variables and flick through the two instead of creating two whole dashboards that look very similar, but just you want the dependent variables to change? Is there some uh, way to do that? Uh, 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 let me understand the question again. What do you mean? So, Maybe, so, say, yes, so say the current dashboard that you have and you want a very similar one, but showing all this information for a different variable. So instead of. Oh, yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. But this is 
This is a completely different story. Uh, we cannot explain it now. Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. Uh, is there some way I can contact you later and you can explain absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. I was absolutely. trying to do this and I... I will send you the, this exactly what you... By the way, I'm using that technique. You, you have so many things to do regarding this. Yes, absolutely, you can. And now Kazi will, will give you all guys the thank email you, you very much. that you can contact us through. Thank you very much, Man. Thank you for to the, all the participants, especially the ones who have been very active. And uh, I can see a lot of questions is still pending, but uh, maybe we will do another session one. I think maybe a further advanced level uh, for yes, people who are doing a lot of yes. public. So maybe we can plan something more. Uh, for now, I have copied a link. If you can see in the chat window, this is a link to the feedback form. And uh, we'll be very delightful, myself and Man, if before leaving the session, you can please click and you can fill the feedback form for us. Uh, that will really help us for our future sessions. And as Man said, you all have my emails. We will send you the recording of the session. So you will again get my email. Any particular questions, uh, we'll be there to help. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, at the end, Man, if you can just stop your screen sharing and people can open their videos, uh, any uh, those who can. So we can wave each other and I can have a screenshot. But let's see how, how many can. <laughs> I'm the only one waving, it seems. Okay, no, we are three now. Thank you. Oh, nice. Thank you. Let's let's have more people on, on the screen. Thank Please, you, guys. Waving. Uh, yes. Thank you, Padale. Thank you, Shazad. Thank you, guys. Muhammad Raza, thank I'm you. Good to see you guys. It's very good to see you. I feel I'm alone. Now I know you are you 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 are you are seeing each other after the whole seven to eight hours, man. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, very good, very good, very good. Thank uh, you, very much. thank you, Shabir, Shahzad. More and more. Uh, thank you, Sayed Murtaza. Seen he is sitting in a garden or is it a background? Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, attending. Screenshot, and I will send it to you to all in the email as well. I will try to thank you. Guys, wh was it effective, the training? Was it good? Do you yeah. like it? Yeah, of course it was. Helpful. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was very good. Great. It was very yeah, good. Yeah, it was great. It was quite informative and useful. Okay, very good. Very good. Very thank good. you, Tessie. Thank you very much. Coming online. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you man. You are welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And please fill the feedback form uh, before uh, leaving the session. You have the link in the chat window. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, some of the people have uh, again asked me the question for the recorded link. Uh, we will send you an email with the recorded link so that uh, you can watch it again uh, for any future references. So we will send it to you across, definitely. Thank you so much, Razi. Really appreciate it. Uh, we can't access the feedback form because our system company system blocks it out. So if you would like to email it to us, perhaps, please. Yes, definitely. What we will do is we will email you uh, on some other uh, platform or version. Uh, maybe because of the Google Docs, it is restricted. So for those who I will receive, uh, we will capture it from online. And for the others, we will send the email version. Great, thanks.
Uh, it's done from my side, Ghazi. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Then see you. See you. Thank you, thank you, Abdul Thank, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, Man, we have already received six to seven forms, so I believe some of the people will be filling in now, and probably to a couple of uh, participants, we will send through the email. Very good, very good. Welcome, guys, all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You are welcome. You are most welcome. Thank you, Kazi. Thank you, Ansila. Thank you for attending the session. Thank you. Thank you, Ansila. Thanks to both of you. It was really an interesting session. Thank you, Vena. Thank, Thank you for attending the Thank session. You. Thank you very much. So, Man, how, how do you feel now? I think it was the third consecutive day with Power BI. <laughs> and uh, so, are you sleeping with Power BI? Are you eating Power BI? I mean, what did it happen? Yeah. In Including fact, it's Friday, a huge. And Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. You know what I like about that? that they, they ask very good questions, very good questions. And uh, yes, but this is basic, it's not an uh, advanced one. So, that's why we cannot go into detail. In fact, I have answered many questions. Um, I, I wasted time, but it's not waste of time. It's 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 useful. Yeah. It's useful. Definitely, I think it will give them a heads up and uh, and heads a start because they can keep it as a reference point to uh, yes. perform the actual uh, reports they are willing to. Yes. And yes. maybe at a later stage they can join our uh, advanced session as well for sure. Uh, absolutely, it, especially the web. If you want to publish to the web and people yeah. interact from from within the from the browser, not from yeah. the real thing. So likewise, one of the participants, he asked the question, for example, when uh, I believe the session is over, we are just now uh, discussing things. The session is over, they will fill the feedback form and then the, uh, they can leave. So like they were, uh, we, we do in Excel, right? So whenever we publish a report, dashboard or any, any data in Excel, everyone in the organization, they have the Excel license and they are using it. So I think likewise, whenever somebody is doing um, an official report on Power BI, that means the whole organization is equipped with the Power BI desktop tool, or maybe maybe the, the published version as well. No, so in what fact- What you have seen in general? I'm just taking it no, as, your, as your experience, what you have seen. No, no, Kazi, in fact, you, you need only one or two developer for the, for the dashboards. And the other people are just user interact. They don't need the Power BI desktop. They need an account to access the data, but they will not have the desktop. They don't have it. They don't need it. They need the Power BI uh, account so they can access the data. That's what they need. We have only in big companies, you have only two, three developers. The other people are users for that. They ask, they have requirements. They ask the developers and then they have interface. They interact with the interface, but not with the things. That's how it goes. Okay, great. And one, uh, as you told me earlier that you are working on some consulting projects on Power BI in, in UAE as well. So these organizations where you are implementing Power BI framework, they, they are still using Microsoft Excel dashboards and Excel yeah. tools? Or, they are, or how do uh, good question. Now, we, you, cannot, uh, you cannot go without Excel, but Excel has something to do, as, we, as I told the, uh, our delegates today, in Excel, you can reference B2, B3, B5, you can. In Power BI, you cannot. You only interact with the whole column, the whole column, not individual cells. So whenever you want to use and reference individual cells, you need Excel. And you know, we, we need that all the time. But Power BI, after I have all the data, I want to show it. So it's not time for, for to calculate, it's time to present. So it's different thing. You need Excel for formulas and you need Power BI for presentation. In fact, Power BI is both, uh, what can I say? 70% Excel and 70% PowerPoint. That's uh, Power BI. 
Right, right, right. Thank you so much. Uh, I think there are only a few people left. So, Man, thank you so much for your time. You're uh, you welcome. Been, uh, already oh. delivering and speaking since last uh, seven hours. Yes. And uh, thank you so much. We will speak later on the phone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.